Welcome to Cax Bar and Podcast, Canada's first podcast bar. What that means is you can come here for food, you can come here for drinks, you can also come here and record a podcast. Come on down, we're located in downtown Calgary, Alberta in the Beltline area. See you soon. I'm back with Francois, and this time you're going to teach me some things. Right. I, I hope to teach you some you things. Go, yeah, because yes. I, I like literally as we go along, I'm, I'm for sure we're going to have a lot of questions. So today we're going to talk about is unveiling the connection, breast cancer survivorship and menopause. Yes. So what's the first thing that I need to that, that you would say or tell somebody when they come to you in regards to to menopause and, and its connection with breast cancer? Um. One of the first things for sure is that, <clears throat> unfortunately, we age. So as, as oh. we age, yes, um, there's going to be hormonal changes. Right. So that, that's, there's definitely a connection or interplay between um, hormones and both uh, if somebody's going through breast cancer treatment or and now done treatment and into survivorship. Mm -hmm. There's some concerns that come up down the road that might be, um, for example, like a what am I doing to maintain my hormones? Because sometimes chemo or radiation can affect hormones as well. Is there one treatment that, because we're talking, this would be an estrogen driven breast cancer, right? Or is there different kinds? Like, is there one treatment that would be better focused to a woman going through menopause than say other treatments? Yeah, a lot of stuff will ha be determined by the healthcare team for sure right. to see what's going on. Um, and then, why I kind of want to bring up this topic with you today because uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month mm -hmm. and also on the 18th of October is uh, recognized as World Menopause Day as well. So kind of thought tie the it's, two of them a together. Good, it's a tie to the two yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, but yeah, so it's um, definitely a lot of stuff um, that has been going on is um, why I kind of getting into these two topics, um, especially uh, for me, it's because have having family members gone through it, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, even some of my own clients. So it's really uh, both uh, breast cancer, um, their journey in breast cancer, and breast cancer survivorship, and also in menopause. So it's kind of like there's some similarities between the, the two groups right. going through. And then, like, like I said, uh, hormones is definitely one of them. And sometimes that's good to do the testing with... Uh, like through your family physician network. Uh, hopefully we do the testing to see what's going on in terms of the hormone levels. And then the other part too is it's bringing more awareness about building a toolbox that can be done now, especially we're living, where we're living today mm -hmm. is way different than decades ago. Right, right, So right. There's, there's new approaches, new techniques, new strategies for both going through breast cancer and be the treatment from the diagnosis to treatment to survivorship and also in menopause in terms of the different phases of menopause there's different things that we could do now to have a more i'll say empowering journey right um because i mean my my aunt my aunt died of breast cancer um i was quite young so i don't really remember what she went through you know but i do know that this will be back in gosh was it the 80s late seventies, early eighties. So I think at that time too, there wasn't a lot of survivors, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't a lot of remission that was happening. A lot of survivors, there was some, but not as much as there is now. Yeah. And what I had sort of always been taught or heard or, or thought was that when a woman's going through menopause, they automatically prescribe estrogen. And that over time they had figured out that this estrogen, this, overabundance of taking estrogen was also one of the side effects was breast cancer. So that always made me very leery of taking, like if my body's going through menopause, it's because it's supposed to, and it's part of the nature of yeah. the way the body grows, you know, from birth to, to death. Yeah. So I thought, you know, if God knows what he's doing or the universe, mm -hmm. what, who am I to, to mess with it? Right. So I've left it alone, but there was, yeah, in the, in the, I'm going to say probably in the nineties, 80s like that was something that i had heard in 2000s um via a neighbor too that was taking estrogen and ended up um with breast cancer but she was taking estrogen for her menopause yeah so i avoided it 
you know, I don't know if I did the right thing or the wrong thing, or what are the studies showing that correlation with anymore? Uh, great question. Um, there has been in the past that, I don't know the name of the study itself, but there has been that kind of relationship that has been brought to, together. So that's why there might be hesitation about doing the hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. um, now there's newer evidence about maybe not as strong of linkages because there's a lot of other factors as well to consider. Like what? So for example, lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? So what's was a stress like? Is there another health condition going on as well? Is there um, other medications in place? So there's just a kind of few of those for sure. Right. So it's like, it's not just a simple like this because everybody's picture is a little different. Right? Oh yeah. Like, right? um, yeah. especially um, journeying through, um, for example, I can come back to what you kind of mentioned like earlier on in terms of survivability. Um, a lot of that has changed now as well because of newer procedures in the cancer treatment as well. Uh, earlier diagnosis, if that can be done for sure, that really helps out because the Canadian, uh, Cancer Society, I just looked at the stats today, uh, updated is August uh, 2023. Um, so a few months old, but yeah. they show at staging where you at and the survivability in terms of a five-year mark as well. So that's on their website. And so now let's say on a, a stage one, you're doing at least probably, I think the stats are looking at 94% survivability at five years. Oh, wow. That's so, really, yeah. So that's yeah. definitely increased. So, so it's really depending on, in terms of how long for staging, how long has the cancer been, let's say, in the body and then first diagnosis. So sometimes there could be a time gap as well. Right. And sometimes, uh, for example, one of my aunts probably went through in stage three by the time it was kind of recognized. So it's a little bit higher. Um, but then the survivability comes down as well in terms right. of percentage. And then any treatment would be much more say you know, invasive or stronger yeah, but than if you had yeah. and so one is the early stage right uh, stage I think, one i think there's a stage zero now as well how I, could I that be a stage isn't zero zero I, I think it's uh <laughs> yeah i think that there's there's a i would have to check but yeah i thought there was i thought i saw somewhere on the stage zero but yeah stage one would be the lowest and then i think there's a 1a and a 1b as well so i think there's a little bit of division oh as right you go along. right well i mean with the advances in medicine now oh, and technology, sure. yeah, you yeah. know, you're able to break things down in a more minute scale. Yeah, that, right? that's been like, yeah. like the advances that we have been super yeah. helpful in terms of just cancer um, diagnosis, treatment as a whole. And I know we're talking about breast cancer uh, for this, um, yeah. but yeah, definitely with the, those advances, it, it's been very helpful for sure right but then after you go through the treatment and everything else um sometimes it's like well something has happened my body has to adjust to the treatment uh, and then while well, there's still energy management to go through there's still fatigue there's still potential on the mental health side of things anxiety and depression so we still need some of that supportive care afterwards as well and so do you work in that area like a lot like helping with the the aftercare and yeah. and the other side like the depression so anxiety some some where my clients have come from um because i'm a certified cancer exercise specialist and also a certified lymphatic therapist so sometimes um after treatment for breast cancer there might be the lymphedema piece or right. so kind of like that swelling that might be happening right. so i've seen some clients to help manage that and right. then at the same time, then it's throwing it. How's your activity level going as well? So are you, can you be consistently doing, for example, a 10 minute walk most days of the week? Right. And then it's um, because of breast cancer, what was the treatment like? Was there surgery? And if there was surgery, what type of surgery? And then we need to restore, like, especially in like the shoulder pack area. Right. The muscles. Re restore and... range of motion, uh, muscle tissue health as well right and if there's been any um the scar tissue as well because of surgeries then can we also potentially address scar tissue uh, therapy as well right so a woman going through menopause now or say was it peri is early right yeah, Peri's Peri's early, early. Yeah. is there is there something that you would suggest or that you've come across in your studies that maybe women should start to like look at doing other than, and I, I get the walking because yeah, it's, it's yeah. such a big thing now, right? That 30 minutes a day in nature 
Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. I was just going to do quick. Yeah. So um, in Perry, there could be, I know menopause is not till maybe in the 50s, but Perry might be a little bit earlier. Yeah. I've known people that probably had it even in their early 40s. They yeah, start having exactly. that Perry. Yeah. Right. So, and they had that so, for like eight years. Yeah. So, you know? so, yeah. so, so things are, are kind of moving along, um, shifting along in the body. Um, in the peri world, it might be maybe more checks on hormonal levels to see what they're doing and what they're like. Um, because it really depends. That, let's say for a woman in the 40s, I'm thinking it's depending, right? So it might be career. Mm -hmm. It might be stay-at-home uh, parent as well. Right. Um, so they're busy. Right. So busy managing a lot of other things. Right. Or even if you're going to work, then come home, but managing it. Yeah, you're still well. yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of stuff going on and also being involved into, let's say, children at school activities. So a lot of that going on. So there's a lot of um, perhaps, and maybe people think this differently, but self care might not be a top priority. No. So, no. so that's, so it's kind of, look at trying to incorporate a little bit of um self-care as a hot like trying to equal out that priority basis as right because well. i think in the 40 in your 40s as women in our 40s and 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 i'm, I'm going to say men as well not only do you have to manage the family and the household yeah. and a job but then you also have aging parents Potential and i think that's yeah, sure. yeah. why that 40 seems to be the most stressful yeah. age because you're juggling so so much stuff yeah Right. And it's interesting how you just mentioned stress. So how do you manage stress? Right. right? Because then if you look at stress, um, it's part of our nervous system. And in terms of the stress world, we, we fire off depending on the stress. Um, that is it's the fight and flight part of the nervous right. system. Yeah. And in terms of the hormones, it fires off a lot more cortisol. That's what I was going to say. Was so, it circle with the C cortisol, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So then, yeah, let's say if we're which all causes out, a lot of belly fat. Yeah, uh, but if we're all out hiking and we come across a bear, yeah, yeah, we need oh, that cortisol. We, we, we yeah. totally need that. We need that fight and flight stuff. But if we're doing all the stress, like the everyday, or like I can share with you the drive here with traffic, potentially <laughs> stressful. Depending how we take that yeah. in terms of traffic, but let's say stressful, then it's it starts to build up and it's kind of, it's just kind of that the continued kind of fight and flight, the kind of release of that hormone. And maybe the stress is not that big, but it's still present. Right. And so how do we manage that? Right. So that's my question. Yeah. How do we manage that? Well, a good way to do it is exercise, for sure. Right. Doing that walk. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, meditation or mindfulness practices, for yeah. sure. Um, breathing practice. It could be yoga. It could be um, journaling for some people. It could be um, playing music, doing art. So there's a lot of very tools that I could do for stress management. Right. So now if you have a new client coming to you and they, they don't know, I, I don't know what I like to do. Yeah. I can go walking, but you know, I've never really done yoga. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Do you sort of help them figure out what it is that they, they, they may like or, or enjoy to have that half hour or 45 minutes a day for their self care? Yeah. I'll, we'll go through a discussion and kind of see what might be, um, enjoyed for sure. And a big key part, like you said, is enjoyment and where can you fit into your day if possible and also doesn't cause additional stress. So right. hopefully it's not right. like, because sometimes people think of exercise as like, oh, I gotta go jo join the gym. Then it's like, oh, it's a half hour, get ready, commute to the gym. And then what time are you going to the gym? Is it during peak time? It's super busy. And then that has become more stressful. Right. So right. It's, it's really finding what's kind of enjoyable or it might be, have you tried this and be curious about this? So it might be, hey, can we look at a six minute online yoga session that's seated? Right. right. So it's somewhere that they could plug into their day. So starting sure. small and simple yeah. and, and okay, so if that doesn't work and I don't like that, okay, let's try something else, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just, I had a client the other day and she realized the importance of uh, strength for muscle tissue health and also prevention or uh, being proactive about prevention for osteoporosis. So, and she brought that up to me. I said, great. I said, what do you know about exercise? She goes, well, I know some, it's important and how do I get started? 
then I said, okay, let's kind of do some circuits as well. And it's a bunch of exercises all back to back. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a heart rate boost. And then I actually referred her to a uh, online platform, uh, shape.com is mm -hmm. for women specific. And they actually, I said, look, here's a four week program. Take a look at it, see if it fits for your schedule. And we talked about some different options for variables and kind of play with it and, think, and be curious about it. Right. And just kind of, it's something new. It might be, I think the language sometimes it might be really important in terms of curious and new because the brain also likes that. Right. Right. So you're trying to help them get out of that fear of mm -hmm. like starting and trying something new or like, Oh, it's too late for me now. Right. Yeah. Like it's, oh, it's too late to start. Like, I know I don't like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Just not, yeah. not my thing. I did it years ago, you know, for a long time when I was training and, and playing a lot of sports. Yeah. But now it's like not my so, thing. So, so now you probably have a, a different chapter in your life. Right. That is yeah. Like, ah, if I get there, that's a bonus, maybe. I think having a dog yeah. for me, one anxiety. If, if I travel without a dog, I will end up adopting one. There's just no doubt about it. But that dog gets me out mm -hmm. oh, to go sure. for that walk every yeah. day. Right. You know, and so I go up to Edworthy Park. Oh, nice. And do, I started with a half hour, but I'm probably more over an hour now. Yeah, well done. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's like, like I think what you said, it, it is really stress relieving mm -hmm. to be able to go and just sort of shake it off. Right. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that's important. I shake things off. Yeah. So you, you might see me sitting there and I'm, I'm shaking, <laughs> and I'm doing it, but no, no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just releasing whatever it is that I'm carrying yeah. around somebody else's crazy or whatever they might mm -hmm. be, you know? So, Really, the key thing is to start moving and start doing yeah, exercise it's, the it's, earlier you start. I think, yes, kind of like our some of our previous discussion is right. Like, movement is, is a big part of it, but it's also just one piece of the puzzle, right? Because like we looked at, you know, we, we could do movement. We could look at the um, understanding what's going on in the body, especially um, in terms of if we're playing, uh, not playing, um, let's rephrase that, uh, hmm. we're we're under care with medication as well. So learning how the medication helps in the body as well. So because medication and could have a potential effect with the hormones, how like help out or kind of inhibit as well. It really depends on the medication. Right. Side effects. Yeah. And then it's also just understanding, especially in terms of menopause is, you know, in terms of perimenopause, menopause or postmenopause, it's the hormones, especially estrogen and Pro, uh, progesterone. Progesterone, yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Um, have changed or are on a lower volume basis as well. So what are we doing there to help to get some support as well? Right, right. So, and then a lot of that could be based on, so we got movement, potential medication, but now it's also the lifestyle piece of what are we eating as well. Yeah. And, and it's funny, so we, we kind of need the food for fuel as well mm -hmm. for a lot of the, the body um, to do is work in terms of its cells uh, but we also have to be cautious of what might what might we be putting into our body and potential frequency as well right and you know especially these last couple of years as inflation has has mm -hmm. uh it's definitely not in that seven percent it's more in the 30 plus percent it's it, it's it's more expensive to eat healthy unfortunately you know to go and to, to go and get to like community natural foods or one of our you yeah. know local places where you're going to get non GMO and a lot of little pesticides and herbicides and all the other kind of stuff, but your bills double and a lot of people can't afford to do that. Yeah. And hopefully like some of the strategies might be, um, label reading to see what's actually in the food. Um, but that takes a little bit more time when you're going grocery shopping. I can't pronounce half the things yeah. that are in the label. And, and it doesn't then, say water, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but then that, that, that's an education piece as well. And all of a sudden it's like, well, there's 10 different ingredients. Um, okay, maybe that's not the right food. Um, and there's 10 different ways to write sugar. Yeah, exactly. So being aware of right. that as well, for sure. So label reading, knowing how to read the labels is a definitely part. part. Uh, sometimes with my clients, we, we go through that. And I, I, we, could, and some of my clients go, "Why are we label reading?" It's like just to be more aware, more educated about when we're shopping for stuff, especially when we're not in the produce section. Like we see a banana, we know a banana. Yeah. Kind of thing, or we see oranges, we we kind of know that. Right. Um, but it's just like if we're going into, for example, 
um, there's benefits of coconut milk. But then if we read the can, there's a whole bunch of other things added. It's like, well, well this is not really coconut milk, yeah. is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So then it's just doing a little bit of that. And even for budget friendly, sometimes it's looking at the frozen stuff as well and actually taking a look at the ingredients. So like, okay, yeah, it's blueberries is blueberries. That's what's in the package. Okay. I'll take it. Right. So frozen is sometimes a better way to yeah. go or the less expensive way. Right. At least I'm going to get yeah. something. De reasonably healthy yeah. or you know quite a bit more healthy yeah. at without without spending you know twenty dollars for a little bag yeah right exactly. yeah yeah okay yeah so so yeah there's definitely you know a, a lot of stuff both in terms of the breast cancer survivorship and menopause you know the nutrition piece that becomes important and there's also like the health lifestyle piece of how are you doing for sleep as well because sometimes right. sleep will get kind of out of whack and especially in menopause because one of the more common symptoms is uh well either the the sweats nice interrupted sweat, sleep nice right sweats yeah or hot flashes so a lot of stuff like that are there some strategies about can you have cooler blankets as well or is there some clothing that helps out in terms of being a little bit cooler as well especially if you're, you're working for sure right like breathable pajamas or something like yeah. that night right that would be yeah that's pretty cool yeah, I've had a fan in my bedroom for a long time, even in the winter. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so fan in the winter time, or yeah. is, is the window open? Maybe not at minus 40, but yeah. Yeah, no, not not at minus 40, but the fan definitely. I, I, I like the white noise, mm -hmm. so I think which I think uh, helps me sleep, is having that white noise in the background yeah. for people. Yeah, it's just, everybody will respond to sleep a little bit differently in terms of um, is it white noise, is it kind of having a routine coming in play? Uh, another client, for example, knows um, she has a lot of energy, kind of closer to sleep. And I kind of go, mm, I guess, like half hour before sleep or especially if you're doing some type of pretty good um, exercise routine. And uh, she goes, no, no, I, I still, it's kind of within my evening routine. Um, but then it's really I still have, you know, brush my teeth and all that stuff. So I still have some downtime, but it's by having that exercise routine close to sleep, the muscle groups are physically tired. And right. sometimes that actually helps out too. Right. So. Uh, yeah, for me, exercising at late at night is, I just get too much energy. So I yeah. used to play a lot of soccer. Okay. And um, our games, like my son's games were always early evening, you know. Mm -hmm. But our games, the moms and dads that yeah. played, were, I've had games at 10, 30, 11 o'clock oh, at wow. night. So I get home at one o'clock and I'm bing, dipping, 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 yeah. you know, I'm bouncing off. The, there's no way I'm going to go to bed, no, true. but I also got to get up at seven in the morning mm -hmm. to go to get ready for work. Yeah. So I used to find that really difficult. And I am naturally, I think a night owl, I think that's in my family, okay. my dad and my mom, my sister's a nurse who does yeah. night shift, Okay. Yeah. you know, by choice. Um, we were talking about, yeah, so my mind is more creative. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say between, say, 9.30 yeah. and 2.30 a.m. Did you come across clients like that that have, like, different kind of sleep patterns? So, so different schedules. It really depends what some of their work might be. So, for example, if it's uh, shift work, then we have to adjust uh, what uh, the, the evening might be for them or a uh, day might right. be as well. So, yeah, so depending on the workload. And, yeah, there's some people that... They have so then it might be shift the clock, right? If that switch everything sense. over, yeah. Well, and you know, I've also heard that shift work is can can be a cause of a lot of stressors that people don't realize because you're yeah. not, especially people who say work a day, you know, this week and the next week they're working nights or what you know, yeah. or three days, two nights, and so they never really get this normal sleep pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no real routine. Well, hopefully, there's better routines if you know your schedule right. um, and it really depends because uh, different professions will have um, you know from uh, medics to police to fire will have different schedules so that's nursing as well doctors right. so yeah yeah I've had so a couple of firefighter friends it depends on the profession right right and I mean they're also working like with the firefighters they're working within a group yeah you know so there is that communication within within your peers that probably help with some of the stress. Do you oh, think? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And right. Then, uh, depending on profession, you know, uh, especially those two you kind of mentioned, it's like 
because their workloads are physically demanding. So hopefully there's an exercise component within that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you've got to lift up bodies into, yeah. you know, whether into an ambulance or out of a fire. Yeah. Yeah. We we want a we want a fireman or firewoman with some muscles. Yeah, that's exactly. for sure, right? Yeah. No, for sure. As you know. So what else should I what else should we know about in regards to that correlation? So uh, the other big part is um, a lot of it is sometimes with both of um, breast cancer survivorship and uh, menopause, we might be thinking that what we know um, like from family members mm -hmm. is what it is right and also what is going on in the medical community is what it is but there's more to it than that so that's kind of why um actually i was mentioning to sean um since last time we were kind of hanging out together um i got involved in uh into a proud partnership with uh, menopause experts of the uk oh cool. so it's just it's a great group in terms of you know, on their advisory boards, they have the doctors specializing in menopause. So a lot of um, good, positive approach to menopause. So that's, you know, philosophy-wise, it's looking to change in terms of awareness of different um, tools that could be involved. So, for example, some of the big, uh, I'll say the bird's eye view concepts are menopause and health. So there's a couple of different topics within that. So, for example, we kind of mentioned sleep. Right. Um, menopause and um, food or nutrition. So mm -hmm. what's being aware of what we're putting into our body and when. Right. To uh, help out in terms of the hormones as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's also uh, menopause and mindset. Because sometimes it, it's just kind of, that ties into a little bit of that anxiety, depression as well. But, that, but it's that also. makes sense though, because your also, mindset has a lot to do. Yeah. Your body follows your mind. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's yeah. A, and kind of uh, what we kind of talked about beforehand. A little bit of that self-care. It's like, where do I put in that self-care? Right. Well. So it's kind of, sometimes it might have to be somewhat scheduled in terms of, for example, I know um, with some of my clients, we've gone through a 30-day mind-body reset. So it's 30 days only. It's one one month. Right? So depending how you, you do the 30 days or one month, is some people in their mind, 30 days, it's way easier than right. one month. So, but so, we, so you, you, you think now the approach to, you know, surviving cancer and, and menopause has definitely changed and broadened yes. than it has, say, 30 years ago. Yeah. Right? It, so it's much broader. It's looked at in a different way. For sure. Looked at holistically as well, yeah. do you think? It, I, or I, I what think do you so. think are the some of the biggest changes that you see? I think it's we're, there, we're realizing there's more than just the medical treatment approach. Like, don't get me wrong, it's important. Yeah. It's super important, but in terms of, well, um, for example, in menopause, it might be, especially for women, it's so it's not like, you know, even talking to my mother, she was, I wish, and she's in her 70s, so I wish there was more awareness and more education about, you know, of what she could do. Right. Because maybe it's just like, oh, you have to kind of deal with it. Or even one of my clients uh, kind of mentions like, well, that's kind of horrible or there's some suffering to it. Right? So it's like, well, maybe that's how it used to be in terms of generational approaches. Right. I'm trying to think of like, it's I mean, my now, mom's passed now. She yeah. was 96 when she passed last year. And I'm just trying to think of like maybe the terms that were used in those days. Yeah. I know her menopause was pretty quick and easy she didn't have yeah. a difficult time of it but some of the terms was oh you know it's just it's, it's that time for her and, you know yeah. or, or oh she's emotional because of this or, or that you know mm -hmm. and even men the men didn't talk about it very much they didn't want to know about it other than the doctor yeah right we can see sean's really young <laughs> sean's like yeah just give it another 20 years sean <laughs> and and uh <laughs> you know but I have noticed that it seems to be more open conversation about yeah. it. And it's not such a, say, a dirty word or like, oh, you know, oh, no, it's a shame. Well, for sure. it's um, So definitely like with the group, um, with the, the menopause experts, it's philosophy-wise, it's looking at positiveness with it. Like, so it's an empowering journey. And um, like even to me, it's, hey, maybe if this is a time of really listening to your body and what does it need what does it want 
and that's where like even as a licensed uh, menopause champion, mm -hmm. it's being kind of your guide to say, hey, you know, this is what you might be looking for. But then with the menopause experts, you know, I have a, a lot of awesome resources that could kind of guide you in terms of maybe a nutrition piece as well, or in terms of um, looking at, are there some options for when I'm getting those night sweats? Because there might be some products like kind of cooling, um, Blank, like yeah, they're, they do, well, they I have like, covers yeah, or something yeah. like that, or that clothing material as well. So, right. I, I yeah. was watching a, a podcast maybe only a couple of days ago, um, and he was talk he was talking about he has this cooling blanket okay. um, that helps him sleep, again, yeah. not menopause, yeah. but it, and he's a young man and he's 31, and uh, he was just talking about how it's really, really regulated his sleep. It mm -hmm. really helps him sleep. Yeah, because sometimes even heavy blankets. Right. potentially do that but they're warm so maybe not idea for the menopause right world, right so, yeah. But yeah yeah no definitely in terms of like um kind of mentioned living now compared to decades ago a lot of changes like the medical advances events for sure um i think there's a lot more communication going on now because it might be a family doctor talking to a specialist so more kind of a collaboration across the board ideally what so doctor do you normally go to see when you're, is that your gynecologist? So, uh, I, ideally, it should be family doctor, then I think is from family doctor, then it's a referral to a gynecologist. To a gynecologist, yeah. yeah. But then hopefully with the family doctor, you could become aware of some of changes that might be happening as well. Right. So, and, and so. Then, and then actually the other part that's really important um, coming to that, it's um, knowing your symptoms because um, every woman will have uh, one of my good friends she said well i don't really have the the hot flashes or stuff like that yeah uh, well, hey, good for cool, you cool, yes. <laughs> but that's one of 1.36 billion globally right so right, 1.36 right. billion is the number of women currently who are in menopause so i did my 1.36 billion globally are currently in menopause yeah. right now so in canada it's 10 million ish Wow. That's according to the Menopause Foundation of Canada. Wow. And so now they can come to you for for some of that sort of side advice of the mental, the food, yeah. the exercise. Because so that, your that's, doctor doesn't, your GP is not likely going to sit down and so much, unfortunately. Yeah, but, you no, know, maybe, maybe they not. can't. There's so much time yeah. to sit and start going, well, let's go over labels or let's, yeah. you know. So being so able you, to have somebody that you yeah, can go so to. and Being like a, a licensed menopause champion, it, it I have a lot of tools and resources at my disposal to help out to kind of build, let's say, your toolbox as well. And then with my background as a certified medical exercise specialist and um, cancer exercise specialist, as well um, working, um, being certified in functional pelvic floor, because that's the other part I look at right. as well, then there's a lot of connections that could be done for sure. Right. And then it would be, Actually, before we started, it'd be, hey, um, Rachel, do you know all your symptoms? And, be, be, I, I, and I would literally but, answer going, <laughs> no. Because we, we might think, like we said, hot flashes, the night sweats, uh, maybe, um, well, what's another common one? I think moodiness is moodiness is another yeah. one. But I think, you know, that can... That, that could be somewhat normal too it, but or it, again it's tied into the cycle right oh, it, it could be tied into the cycle depending what stage you're in as well right um so a lot of that stuff so, so we know the common let's see the common symptoms what about skin so skin is, is, it, is it dryness in the yeah. skin the skin gets drier right yeah, yeah. Skin dryness. i'm going to say sex drive probably changes yeah libido change um to be really perfectly honest with you i think I just didn't give menopause much thought. Yeah, I just, it, I mean, other than cracking a joke about it, yeah. but I'm just like, so, it is what it is. Yeah. And then, you know, so, it, it, so yeah, that's, right. that's kind of sometimes the thinking, but now, um, like let's say here in Canada, the menopause foundation uh, of Canada, they came out with a really cool news brief uh, early this year in January. And that kind of spearheaded my journey into kind of, Hey, I want more education. I want more. What do I do? in terms of being able to provide and making a change in terms of a positive direction because right. it could be oh hey i know this and this so instead of 
because in terms of postmenopause, you've done the menopause symptoms, but some of the symptoms could be hanging on with you for well, many, I, many years after. Right. And so how do you quality of life? How do you try to better that? So that's where I became tied into the um, menopause experts as well, because I have all those resources and it saves me time instead of me going search for stuff. Right. But it also makes you a, what is it? A plethora of knowledge mm -hmm. for when a customer or a client yeah. comes to you and says, okay, I'm not really quite sure what's going on or yeah. like, you know, I'm not happy or what can I do? Yeah. You know? so, so definitely a big part is knowing some of the symptoms because, um, because on world menopause day, I did a quick little YouTube on cardiovascular health as well, because sometimes in terms of heart flashes, it's a vasomotor, um, aspect in terms of physiology. So it's a dilation of blood vessels, but now, do you also have something cardiac-wise going on that maybe should be looked at a little bit more because um, high blood pressure right. is part of the cardiovascular conditions. Right. Um, there's also, ah, shoot, <laughs> I totally forgot what I, I mentioned, but there, there's six of them that comes up for in terms of cardiovascular conditions related to menopause. Oh, right. So, so there's six yeah, so that they, relate to cardiovascular problems. But that are also that are, that are all related to menopause. menopause. So sometimes we don't think about those because they're behind the scenes. And we just know hot flashes and we just know night sweats. Right. As an example. Yeah. And then the other part, because we talked about hormones, I know one of my colleagues, I have uh, through one of my coaches that we look at nutrition and hormone, hormonal health. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, like a three page. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit lengthy. So, but it's a very detailed in terms of under each category, you check off what's more applicable and then it scores out what might be going on in terms of your hormones, like estrogen, etc. And then that's kind of neat because then you could say, Hey, you know, I'm a little bit more aware. I might want to take this information and go to my doctor and say, can we do some blood tests or can we do a Dutch testing as well? All right. So Dutch testing is, really more specific to hormonal right it tests aspect. all the hormone levels in your yeah. in your body right now in menopause just testosterone because we carry it we have to does that yeah. go down as well or does that sort of stay the same uh shoot i've been focused on the other two so much right uh, i, I never even thought about but, the testosterone but it's funny though because you kind of you mentioned that and um i know some people might be thinking and kind of watching this podcast and going Here's the guy talking about menopause. What the heck? He won't go through it. Uh, but you no, know, had family members go through it. And right. like I said, I have clients and friends. Um, but there is a male version of menopause as well called andropause. And that's where the testosterone levels decline. Okay. So I've heard a little bit about this. And I, and I think I heard it joking in passing, you know, group of women or whatever. And they sort of laughed about it. And I thought, is this not never been talked about? Like, do we not even did we not even know this, or were men just really quiet and silent about it? Yeah. So actually, in the guys' world, um, because as we age, hormones mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So it's I think what I saw in the research is about age forty. Then we kind of might want to start looking at some our, our hormonal levels as well. So does that mean that you should take testosterone? Uh, not necessarily, but it's, it's kind of like maybe do some testing to see where you're at um, because will a certain activities increase hormones like exercise things uh, like going to the, do, do, it's going to increase do the testosterone out, yeah. would it increase estrogen like say for women so is it ex is there anything yeah. outside of like taking you know hormones that we could do to maybe help increase our or own or natural production yeah um I think once in the menopause, um, I could be corrected this, I'd have to take a look, but as you start to decline the, into the tank, mm -hmm. um, it's in terms of the production or the folks that are in terms of this endocrine system that's responsible for the uh, hormones, uh, that part is might be, hey, you know, we might be close to retirement kind of deal. Yeah. So okay. we, we may not be as involved, so that's where you need that support. So that's where maybe the, the food might be a little bit helpful for sure to help out with the some of the support for the hormones and and that's where that in terms of menopause for sure that's where the hrt stuff comes in for sure hrt is so that hormone replacement therapy. yeah yeah then there's something to do with i was gonna probably sound like a horse hormone that supposedly was being used in the uh, study in menopause as well 
Yeah, not aware I think of that had that I think that had also to do with weight weight loss because again that's that's another side effect of menopause is weight gain. Right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. and some people by doing exercise, doing uh, that could really help out in terms of the cardiovascular the stress stuff. And for some it may not. Uh, but that also comes back down to really looking at the connections of what's happening in the hormonal world. How can we be doing some support? Um, is there, because sometimes there could be supplements to help out. Right. Um, but can we look at using food instead as well? So that way we talked about budgets because sometimes a lot of the companies, especially uh, for um, supplements, that could be a big price tag per month basis. So maybe the food might be not as pricey because uh, like one of the recipes um, that I have access to in terms of the menopause experts group is um, there's a really neat chicken, um, pretty much like broth recipe. So it's like, oh yeah, I could chicken, broth, broth yeah, um, carrots, celery. So stuff that we know as probably your chicken, chicken soup without right. the noodles, right? Without so, the noodles. Yeah. But then it actually looks at, why are we having these foods in there to really help out and support some of these hormones? I suppose also some of what you're eating can even cause cravings as well. You know, like if you're eating, say, way too much sugar, and, yeah. and I mean sugar as in a carbohydrate yeah. kind of sugar, that can also cause more cravings and more, yeah. you know, for yeah. more of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Some of the nutrition things that I've seen um, in terms of both helping out in terms of the breast cancer and also um, the menopause, can you eat uh, whole foods? Kind of more seasonal. So we kind of had a uh, discussion about seasonal foods and can we have that? And because that will help out for sure. Um, is there a little bit more, in some places there's been a little bit more lean towards the keto and also uh, intermittent fasting. Right. There's so much so, now so, about the intermittent and, and, fasting. And the hard part is, I'll, and even when I look at some stuff, because I follow um, both cancer and uh, uh, menopause and hormones, there's so much stuff out there in the uh, social media world. It's overwhelming. Totally. So that's where it's getting to. But then that's where it's like, okay, it's overwhelming. Where do I start? And that's where sometimes by, oh, hey, I know somebody that could help just have a focus you know i think that's right because because yeah there's times i go this is just too much yeah so forget it yeah so yeah there could be that like yeah. one, one of my good friends said you know I'm, I'm i'm comfortable nutritionally i said yes that's awesome but do you also are you aware about x y or z it's like oh i didn't know that and that's where it's, it's not to say hey let's do a whole swap over the weekend in the right. kitchen no uh, but it's also okay let's start to do things on small increments that are actually doable as well and that's where um especially what i'm looking at as a licensed uh menopause champion is let's do small things and it's kind of like okay hey maybe it's cutting out that sugar or maybe it's a sleep routine but it's not well, starting it's small seven, means seven, it's not seven, it's not seven, overwhelming. Seven yeah, it's, it's not almost like you're it's... overwhelmed and then you feel like you're set up for failure. Yeah. If you can start and you're like, wait, I think Jordan Peterson says it best. Just, just make your bet. Just start there. Yeah. You know, and then the rest of the day will follow. And oh, exactly. uh, right. And, and, so and that's where kind of uh, I know like my philosophy and the ones at the menopause experts group. It's like let's start something small. Let's get some awareness. Do I know my symptoms? Do I know what my hormonal levels are like? Great. Let's maybe start there. And then we have somewhere to start. Right. And then it's kind of like, okay, well, do we know for sure you're in either menopause or perimenopause? Because it could take a while to kind of not have the monthly cycles as well. Right. So there's a couple different kind of benchmarks as well. To right. Be at. Right. Because, I mean, I have a lot of... Uh, women friend over the years and we're all roughly within you know 10 years of each other mm -hmm. and there's so many things that are in common but yet yeah. there's so many things that are incredibly different mm -hmm. so i mean if you ask me what my symptoms were i go uh, i don't really know like mm -hmm. what am i you know, yeah i get some hot flashes that's about all i can yeah. tell you you know um but yeah. i've never really thought about yeah. it or no one's really ever asked me 
or in the same respects, I probably never really sat down and go, well, what are all the symptoms I should be looking for? Mm -hmm. You know, like what are all the things yeah. that happen? So I can go, yeah, no, yes, yes, yeah, no, yeah, yes, exactly. yes. So it's kind of being... Kind and I of, imagine those symptoms can change over time. Oh, so yeah. if you're in period, it starts like this, and yeah. you don't have these particular symptoms, but all of a sudden yeah. the next year, you, they could change to this and that. There's no yeah. rhyme or reason, or there's no rules. Exactly. And then it really depends on what's happening in your life as well. So is there a lot of stress going on? Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of, uh, well, change brings a lot about stress as well. So is that happening because it's a new work as well? And right. so we, there's a lot of things going on for sure. And um, definitely from that um, news article that came out in the national in January, you know, here in Canada, for sure, there's a lot more discussion ideally going on uh, about menopause for sure. And then, it's also, well, in my um, kind of connection of uh, breast cancer and uh, survivorship and menopause, because sometimes on what's happening in the breast cancer treatment world, that could set somebody up towards menopause as well. That's right. Because if you, right. So then all of a sudden, yeah. because of this, then you go over here and into yeah. this. Yeah. And then it really depends on, on, on also age and about timing and everything else as well. Because the breast cancer could be almost at, well, I'll say any age. Yeah. Whereas menopause is typically, in terms of in terms of uh, the aging cycle for women, is usually in the the fifties. You know the, yeah, right. So, do you think that there's more breast cancer happening in women going through menopause than there is, say, you know, in their twenties and thirties, even early forties? You do you see that there's more? Like, is there a way that breast cancer is somewhat tied to me to menopause in some cases or you know in a in a larger number of cases where you can say yeah there seems to be a correlation i, I think that we that might be something through stats where the, the kidney cancer society might have to kind of look at right more because it's just kind of really looking at you know where somebody ate where somebody's age and where have they been diagnosed with let's say breast cancer but then now let's say in the 50s that you know, if not in menopause yet, that might kind of trigger something. For sure. My so. aunt was, she was in her fifties. Okay. Yeah. Late forties, early fifties yeah. when she passed and probably within two years, it was pretty quick. Yeah. But that said, as kind of, as we age, it's hormonal changes. So it, can we start to do something earlier or yeah. before so that it lowers our chances and our risks? Yeah. I suppose if you're lowering your stress level, if you're eating healthy, if you're putting movement in your life, mm -hmm. that you're getting good sleep, overall that's going to lower your chances of a lot of things. Yeah, for sure. You uh, know, heart disease, yeah, you know, because and, of stress. And, I, I know yeah. this stuff will come up, that that's part of life, but in terms of even like going through my education in terms of hormones, I'm going, okay, yeah, like, can't. Dude, should I be paying attention to that? I'm going, yes, I should be. Right. And so now I'm a bit more prone of, okay, what types of tests are there for me as well to take a look at? So next time I go see my family doctor, it's like, hey, can we get my my hormones checked out? Or, hey, we never really done thyroid check. Can I? Can we get that in as well? Is the thyroid tied into menopause? Um, it may be because it's part of the system in terms of hormones as right. well. So, um, like it's, the bigger system is the endocrine system, mm -hmm. and which is all about hormone, the, a big piece of it is a hormonal uh, communication. Right. I'll say because part of our brain is about communication as well with the hormones as well. Right. So it's, yeah, there's a, <laughs> like it's, there's a lot more behind the scenes. Right. And when we think about, oh, hey, it's just, I, I went through breast cancer treatment, I got my chemo, I get my radiation. And maybe I have my medication, but well, we need to do a little bit more as well in terms of looking after for better quality of life. Right. And staying in remission. Yeah. And right. kind of because some of the fears are recurrent. So right. Can we, you know, set ourselves up in terms of sleep, nutrition, some movement and with some guidance as well. Right. Because sometimes even after treatment, it's okay. What do I do to do that? Where do I go to? And so hopefully there's going to be more 
collaboration and more linkages in terms of community resources. Right. So, so now if I, if I knew some, uh, someone who say had questions or wanted, was going through this, I would put them directly in touch with you and say, here's somebody who's going to ask you the right questions to help you figure out now what the right move, the next right move yeah. is. Right. So we'll make sure then to put in the, is it the show notes that we put it in? Yeah. We'll make so, sure that they can yeah. get in touch with okay. you because I, I think a lot of women feel very alone in a yeah. lot of this as well. There's a lot of that and there's definitely a lot more groups coming on board because I follow some of the perimenopause, menopause groups in the Facebook world and mm. a lot, there's a lot of questions I want. Okay. So how do I answer that? <laughs> and following the rules. Uh, and there's probably answer. a lot of, wrong or incorrect information yeah. or it, it could be correct for this person but not necessarily yeah. correct for that so person it, it, it's funny because in terms of my health background i go you can't really recommend a medication that's kind of broad based that should be brought up to that that individual's healthcare team for sure right. but it's also what are some of the other resources available and so it's kind of do that education do that awareness and know that there's a lot of self-care things that could be done even with a little bit of guidance and coaching mm -hmm. that you know could be very empowering well I, I think it would be good to be able to work with someone like you because even before going to see my gp or you know the the um gynecologist in regards to this to be able to talk to someone who has a lot of knowledge it's going to change the questions I'm asking when I go into my oh, GP sure. and it's going to change what I'm asking for, like what particular tests that maybe I wouldn't have thought of doing. Yeah. So I think even speaking with you before going mm -hmm. can be very useful yeah. because it's preparing you for that, yeah. that and, visit. And, and right? sometimes it's asking some of those questions, like I, I grant as a small aside, when my father is going through lung cancer, it's like, Hey dad, ask some of these questions. Right. So it's kind of, because it can be overwhelming too when mm -hmm. you know you're going to the doctor and it's like oh yeah so it's okay here let's let's yeah. make a plan and a piece of paper and write down the questions oh, sure. that, that you want to ask i think that's a great idea yeah, yeah and i think it's great that there's a man that actually is learning about this oh, thanks. like uh, i really think that's awesome i think a lot of women would really appreciate that it, it, it's uh that's awesome uh for sure and thank you for saying that right um i know that's been some of my questions with some of my clients and even one of my coaches, like, why should I listen to you? I said, well, you know, I want to make a difference. That's, right. that's why I'm investing in the education and kind of knowing a little bit more This I want to make a difference because I've seen um, kind of the status quo, like with uh, family members, friends, colleagues, and even some of my clients, and they're going, well, hey, have you thought about this and this? Or ask, you know, ask your provider about this, right? Right. And they're going, oh, how did you know that? I said, ah, I like books. I like <laughs> educating myself, but also by having like a professional group now. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome. Right. So it's kind of, so now I like that partnership with the uh, menopause experts and that's where it definitely, I know uh, both like they're in the UK and then here in Canada, even with the menopause um, foundation of Canada, we're both, they're both on the same theme of uh, what's happening in the workplace. Cause that's a whole other kind of ball game in terms of for, definitely the menopause stuff in terms of getting companies to be more aware of what's going on because here in Canada, it's a quarter of the workforce is female. So and what would the, what would the company though uh, so, responsibilities do be um, in those cases? Like I don't necessarily mean, well, we got to, we got to <laughs> coddle to ev everybody no. who's got, I got this and I got this and yeah. I got this and I got this. And uh, it's like, no, I, I, I got to run a business I here. That, but I, I think even as a business owner, it's, recognize where somebody might be let's say in menopause right. but then kind of like how we have the uh let's say employee benefits in terms of okay can i cover maybe um this falls under my benefit plan to see like a, a therapist or a guy yeah yeah i guess a, lo so, a lot of plans I guess actually... so, so some plans are it might be a little bit more limiting yeah. but now it's also hey let's do this and it's kind of okay let's be okay having that discussion as well and because a, a lot of companies may not have policies in place but that might be something to go towards right it's like don't don't get upset when she has the fan on <laughs> yeah so something yeah, right. like that because and, I, and desk, it's minus 40 outside <laughs> at your desk you might have to have your fan right, right? so yeah but know why 
Yeah. Right. So and then it's like, oh, hey, we yeah, we could accommodate that. Yeah. Right? It's not like a super big fan that's gonna blow papers all over the place. Right. And, exactly. Yeah. It's just like little things that you can do. Yeah. Or or at least have an understanding of okay, I understand what's going on, and I'll yeah, just and then I you think know that's, that's where in the workplace is kind of. Um, you know, kind of doing a little education, kind of those luncheons and stuff like that. It's kind of like, oh, hey, what's going on? Or maybe it's um, in terms of the foods, are you, like, especially if you're catering foods. What have we missed? Have we missed anything? Um, Is there anything that's in, that you I don't would, think so. I think we, we've covered, covered in some everything. Way, shape, or form. Yeah. It, you know, and I'll probably like go home and then have a question. So oh, I will, okay. I'll, I'll shoot it off to you. Um, yeah, and if, no, I think a big part is awareness, having that discussion. And like, I know there's a lot more, you know, like in the cancer world, there's a lot of support groups for sure mm -hmm. with various organizations. Um, I think we just need to do a little bit more of that in terms of the menopause world. And like I said, um, men go through. Uh, what do they call the men's uh, one? They go to call uh, women pause? Uh, Andropause, <laughs> I think that's kind of uh, yeah. what I've seen. Um, but then there are some symptoms that are very similar, but then the other ones are very unique to each as well. Right, right. So, so it's about yeah. talking about it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then <coughs> and learning and as if, much if as you can. Family members know. Right. Then it's like, oh, hey, okay, give a little bit of space, self care. Right. Oh, you need to prioritize a self care. Great. Hang out. What do you need for your bath time? Whatever. Something. And like heredity that. play. Heredity does play a part. I, I do believe. Like I talk to my sister who's older than me. Because she remembers my mom's menopause. I was 10. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember us. You know, um, I was a oopsie daisy like a little yeah. later in her life. So my sister is the one who. So, yeah, I did. I think it is about asking questions, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it's really cool to be able to find someone like yourself nice. that can really help people through and put a group together. Yeah. Even put a group of women together and, and it, yeah, like, even and, talking and, and, to yeah. some of my colleagues, and you know, some of my colleagues are going through that right now, and and some of my friends is like, oh, hey, yeah, I never thought about that, right? right? Or it's like, what? We you can do a little bit more detail stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah, well, that's for great. Sure. So, but yeah. So, well, thank you so thank much you for your time well. today. I really appreciate it. We'll make sure to put all your information so that if anybody needs to reach out or wants to reach out, they know where to find much you. Much appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. Been a pleasure. Great. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time. Thanks.